Hello, welcome and good morning. ICF Slalom World Cup Final, Le Cédé Gale 2018. We're here, course side, to show you all the action that's going to be taking place today. We have two semi-finals coming up, starting with the women's C1. 30 athletes are going to be battling out for top 10 places. And then we go on to the men's K1, where we have 40 athletes battling out for top 10 places. We're going to be talking you through the action, showing you what's happening a little bit behind the scenes as well. I'm Matthew Layton, as always. I have some guests coming to show us and to speak about the experience. Rhys Davis from Great Britain made the finals, the World Championships finals in C2 a few years ago. That disappeared, so he changed his trade. And now he's actually working for the coaching setting up of Ireland. Hello, Rhys. Good morning, Matt. That's great to be here today in Sale. Beautiful weather, beautiful course. Hopefully some great action on the race course. Well, there's no wind today, which is a key. It's a little bit overcast. Weather, not really nippy, but probably about, what, 15, 16 degrees. And the course is the same as we saw yesterday with the upstreams. 5, 8, 13, 14, 17, 19. So we're going to really examine what happened yesterday. All the athletes that are competing today will have had no excuses because they had a lot of chance yesterday to, a lot of the, the girls have been on the water in the K1 and they all of them had a lot of chance to really decorticate a look through what's happening. First event we're going to see today is the women's K C1, of course. So that's uh, where they're kneeling in their boats, coming down. A lot of the athletes have been out there in the last couple of hours looking at the course. These are the athletes that are going reverse order of where they qualified a couple of days ago. So the first 10 are the athletes that have been on the course twice. They went to the first heats, they didn't get through, they had to go through the second heats. The other athletes have only been on the water once in the C1 category. And as always, Jess Fox is the uh, fastest athlete, but that's, that's, that's normal, I guess. Uh, clearly she's not. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong bit. Yeah, no. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise. Mallory Franklin came through as the fastest, so uh, I'll shut up, Reese. Tell us what's going on. So, um, yeah, the, um, the, sem the qualification the other day showed some, a bit of a, a slight mix-up to the normal routine, but again, we see Mallory, Anastia, and Kimberly Woods in the top top five, and Nuria Villabur-Rubla in fifth. She's always a big threat in this course, knows it like the back of her hand, just gets some speed. Claire Jacquet from France, been around a long time now, lots of experience, and as you can see, we give you the stats here, the world ranking really does talk about the consistency in the last couple of years, so we're going to talk you down the course, that's not what you want, it's a two second penalty on the start, is that down to nerves or what's that down to? Uh, I think it's just, you've got to watch out for the water on that right hand side, it's a bit trickier, people tend to stay down the left and she's just let it get take advantage of her, but that was a great spin, great recovery into four, and then, ooh, a bit of a... Bit unusual switch technique in the gate there, but she pulled it off in and out, and she's driving down to six. Uh, let's see what she does here. So it's a bit of a dog leg. The first, style, the first seven are. She decided to spin on that. Oh, yeah. The first section that they turned down into the long straight. But she's had good traction and good tracking into gate eight. And that was great. And she's in and out and pulling herself straight down the stream and sprinting down into nine quite a long long section here where they really it's not that difficult this section is it no but there's a lot of subtle time to be made here and there the um, the better you can keep it tracking forwards the quicker the time will be and it's just the athletes really looking out for what they can get in and out here crucial 13 12 13 we saw quite a few of the senior athletes really not mastering that section no it's one of them one of the key feature moves here in the say and oh, okay just just clipped 14 on the exit and unless we can see on the screen she's got a penalty on 13 so she's gonna have to really find some time in this bottom section. Uh, she's, she's taking, I'd say, almost careless errors. Yeah, they're just slight hits of clumsiness where maybe the awareness is not quite where it should be, which is a shame because overall the quality of her paddling is, is up there. And then, yeah, that was a great upstream up on, um, on 19. Let's see how she handles this last stagger. Uh, she's going to be beating herself up about those penalties because overall I'd say she's done some good canoeing here. So first down of reference. So paces. Probably won't expect to go through. No, we can see her disappointment in the way that she's just hitting about ever so slightly coming around. But here, Sabatini's also hit the first. Yeah. Yeah, it just really sets pressure from the word go when you take a penalty on the first gate. But another good spin. Let's see how she tracks into five. Maybe just a little bit low, having to pull hard to get out. 
but she's on the exit and she's on the attack back for six just just turned out to the left a little bit lost the track and so it's a little bit of time already lost on the top section that's something we expect to see being executed very well by the later stages of the race today What's interesting as well as Michael was like ever reading the, uh, the, the, the finalist is uh, Jess Fox is, is uh, going to be getting middle of the course. So we'll see how, how, that, uh, how that goes in reference. Yeah, for whatever reason, uh, I guess things didn't quite go to plan on qualifications, but I'm sure she's hungry to get going. But right now, Sabatini is back on the charge, getting ready to see how she does this coming to 13. Ooh, just a little bit low. She didn't quite have the turn and the contact she needed in 12. <laughs> Instinct for the camera. They were expecting her to, to make a, a really good run. And we, there's a couple of things here that either can get uh, too much water on or they can be a bit too clever and fall off the back. Yeah, the, um, it's a move of subtlety. You've got to really just just get all the ingredients just right or else you will be punished. Touch. Oh, this is not going to... Sabatini's plan, she's going to have to really, again, just keep pushing, just find what she can to keep going right to the end. Let's see how she goes through here. Get a bit of speed running through, Ooh, 17. And nice, that was a good breakout. Let's see if she can pull it back down right to the end now. We're seeing a lot of switching here, and, and what we saw yesterday, interestingly enough, is quite a few of the senior athletes now are starting to switch as well. We saw Dave Fox in the, in the semis of uh, feeling more and more head switching. Yeah, it's been, I think it's a technique that's been played around more and more by the um, senior athletes. I think the, um, the senior women have really showed the potential that this technique has to make it racing quicker. I think we're gonna, it's definitely going to be a tool that's going to be in the trade over the next few years. With the timing, we're trying to show you as many races as possible. The dilemma for the, uh, for the directors is to show you as much action. However, there's only two minutes between each race. That's why, unfortunately, we have to either lose the beginning or the end of, a, of an athlete. But there's a little bit of a, a challenge there by uh, Ms. Zova, 20 years old, gaining experience. Yeah, just a slight touch in gate five. But let's see how she handles the rest of the course. It's absolutely crucial here that she catches that top wave just about five and nicely in, gets good tracking into eight and she can be in and out. That's been really efficient. That's going to be saving her time all the way down. Let's see how she goes through this leg here. The secret is to see if they keep it running as straight as possible. Maybe just a little bit too much turn in nine. Let's see the tracking through this turn. Again, just possibly a little bit too much slide, but overall good tracking. Uh, on to the car move in and out it's on 13 that was a great line there just bring it out and then drive it into 14 nicely executed again so it's just slightly up at the moment which is great third yeah. athlete to go we have uh, plenty more coming to you live from the sale wherever you are in the world welcome basics uh, obviously 260 meter course around about nine or ten cubic meters per, per second coming down water's a bit brownie because it rained a couple of days ago yeah there's quite a heavy storm fall which i think is a bit unusual for around the say um, i remember a few days ago going just a bit further downstream and seeing the river running red from all the, the red earth <laughs> but um and here at the end it's uh, coming underneath us now it's a long long final sprint uh, she has to keep driving. Bit of lactic, bit of hurt. Well, 2.3 up, so it goes into first place, which is uh, which is good. Good for now, but I think that time is going to be challenged as we go on through the semis today. Lena, she said, uh, speaking to her this morning, she's a little bit tired. Uh, two two weekends of uh, intensity. Obviously, you have to uh, move from Tatsun to here. Yeah, and I guess all the athletes are still preparing for the Worlds in Rio, so that's the, the big prize for this year. So. Um, a lot of them have still be keeping on the training. It's a little bit more volume than they normally like to put in for the, the World Cups this weekend. And that starts on the 28th, 29th of September in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So I guess that's the highlight of the year. Not much at stake in the sense that the, the qualifications for the Olympics are going to take past place here in Seoul uh, next year. And that's most of the quota places are going to be given out. So a lot of the athletes on the teams are really trying to master the water here and master the, the course. Well, look, we're not point four up at the moment for Lena with masses of experience. Yeah, she's on a beautiful run. Good tracking through that 9 to 11 section. Let's see how she sets up here for 12, 13. Good bit of bow up. Good catch on the downstream blade. Oh, a tasty switch to bring in and out. It's on That's her own side on 13. Let's see how she handles 14. She's, she's creating the width. She's getting in the bow. Oh, 
As I say, it looked like she was setting up so just upstream so she would have less work to do, but I can guess it just wasn't quite enough drive and not enough weight on the front, so she's fallen off, so that's lost to the pace that she had in the top half. Driving in 16. Yeah, so let's see. She's going to have to go something nice here. Oh, just a little bit low in 17, but she's having to fight it down, but she's up back on the charge. I don't think she's letting that mistake in 14 phase her really been going flat out all the way see how much energy she has at the end yeah the, um, the Germans are always famous at having a quite a good physical prowess so I suppose if you're doing so many charging. loops all day it's in Augsburg yeah but let's see how she acts one here just a little bit hesitant at the bottom she's going to offline into 22 that's going to have cost her time and energy but she's going to just have to keep sprinting all the way to the end So nine extra paddle strokes as soon as she crossed it out and she goes into second place and it looks like she's left absolutely nothing out there yeah, at all. Yeah, I think she's got much left in the tank now. Hi, uh -huh, it's uh, Miriam Lathcano from Spain. She'll know the course, she'll know what she wants to do. No, it's not just a case of executing it. Easy. Just a little bit low into the to five, but overall, I think she can be proud of that. And now she's going to be driving through his next moves. And ooh, she's setting up for a forwards here. It's important to really try and get back above the gates. That's just she's done so she can get good traction into eight. In and out of the pole, she's putting herself back into the flow and trying to use that flow to get her speed down. Now for the 911, where tracking is instrumental for the section. Possibly Two point four up. So uh, we'd expect beauty. we'd expect her to uh, if she manages to to cope with the nerves and I saw her walking the course of the coach and she, she looked uh, pretty calm to be fair. No, that's good, it's always good when the athletes can relax into a race and make the most they can to enjoy it. Just a little bit out of line on 13 and in my opinion the Stagger 911 wasn't as good as it could be so I think she may have lost a little bit of pace that she had a minutes over earlier. And yeah, as we can see on the split she's down by 0.36. But it's up to Miriam just to keep tracking, keep attacking it down and make what she can. In and out of 17, that's what she needs. And yesterday we saw the Spaniards with uh, Mylon Shuro taking an excellent silver medal. Uh, the men in the C1, it was young 18-year-old uh, Miguel Tave, who's an amazing future. He came ninth in the C1, so we're yet to taste the victory. Yeah, but I'm sure we've got you some big names coming later. down. Again, and then the C1 we got Nuria Villarubla, who's always a threat on so and then with the kayak men, Spain are famous for having their quick pacey kayak men on this course. Well, it's okay, it's safe, it's the first clean run. Yeah, it's safe, but a little bit slower than she'd like, I'm sure, but unless we see that disappointment in our face, I think it was in that bottom half where she really lost her time. Victoria Uz from Ukraine. Let's see how she goes. We saw she had a a good result five years ago. She's been on the circuit quite a while now. Yeah, she had, since we call her, having quite, been quite successful on the under 23 circuit. Uh, for whatever reason, it's not been quite out in recent years, but she's on the charge. It's not going to let that phase her, cause race by race, that's what we, the athletes look for. And uh, oh, just a little unsettled going into seven, but she's on a good spin, driving in. Let's see the traction she has. Just a little bit low into eight. She had to pedal herself upstream. Now she's back in the flow and she's attacking down. I think we're going to see her maybe just a little bit off the pace on this split. Oh, I was wrong, but she's up on the pace. So maybe she's got something in the tank, and that was a good aggressive line through 9, 10, 11. But oh, as yes, you can see, she just caught a bow in the flow, and on the crossbow, it's quite a tricky turn to do, and she's having to really work out to drive up here. You can see her trying to punt off the wall, get anything she can to try and scramble into 13. So that's what, five or six seconds lost there? And yeah, quite a lot of energy as well. Yeah, it's, it's always the energy and the, it's the mental morale that goes more than anything when you have those paddlebacks. You've got to be really strong, really tough mentally just to get back on it. Okay. So Rhys Davis from Great Britain, coaching Ireland, uh, knows his stuff. Oh, as you can see, she's nine seconds down. She's not going to be challenging the lead today. And just oh, and there's another one. So it's, it's a the pressure's uh, starting to show. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's often the, um, you know, the unsettling emotions just makes these errors more and more prone as it gets more and more, goes more and more wrong how, all the way a, down. As a coach, how do you, I mean, you know it's going to happen, it does happen, how do you instill in your young athletes to do, uh, to do better? Um, I mean, a uh, philosophy I've been trying recently is to um, embrace the idea of failure because I feel the, um, 
there's so much risk always in slalom that you've got to push yourself and unless you become comfortable with the fact that every now and again things are going to be wrong it's always going to be more of an intimidating threat and until you get comfortable with that I don't think you can really progress in the sport but Lika right now, Jones, ambassador for New Zealand Olympic silver medal this morning I called her and she was looking for a boat luckily she found it she said it's a bit difficult with two, <laughs> two boats out there but uh, let's see how she uh, masters the, the sea one great, great initiative yeah, she's quite a character in the scene, but um, recently she and Campbell have been basing themselves a little bit in Nottingham over the summer, so we've been getting a few cheeky sessions with them over there. But she's looking great in C1, considering she's picked it up to compete properly this year. She's played around it a few years back, but... Well, five seconds up, this is safe far, it's really good start. Yeah, that's what we want to be seeing. Lots of switching there, though, that might be just a, lot, just a little bit of time, but whatever she does to make it comfortable on this course, and great curl move into 13, that is going to be paying dividends lower well, on the course. Well, she's really taking the course apart. Yeah, she is. Like I said, she's really setting up here. Let's see if she's got the bow up enough. Great upstream. I yes, think, yes, yes. I think some of the seal men would be jealous of that in breakouts. Yeah, five, five seconds up still. Just hold yeah. it together, Luca. Now, she keep driving this down to the bottom of the course. Well, clearly she knows the water having been on it yesterday. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of advantage having that uh, previous runs in the kayak women, but the same advantage, I guess, to anyone who's brave enough to attempt to do two classes. Uh, it's really great seeing it being done by the seaman women. Great in and out. Let's see how she sets up this. Oh, just a little bit tight there. Not the great camera angle, but let's hope she came through. Yeah, the Luca Jones from New Zealand is uh, holding it together. We saw five seconds up at the split, but she's having to really use all her experience now. Come on, power through. Yeah, she's just lost a little bit of track, and so I think she's lost a bit of potential there. And just a bit of fatigue by the end, but into first, she's not going to be happy. I think that bottom end of the course. So it's just well, it's, it's there. good, but perhaps uh, there's better. Well, there's any, there. any seven athletes gone. Now it's Noemi Fox. Let's see how Noemi goes. We saw her walking the course with uh, with Mother a few minutes before, looking very much in the zone. Yeah, they do take their racing very seriously, but she's in and out of gate five, pushing down to six. Good start. Good focus on her face. Let's see how she sets up for seven again. Guess getting the traction up and around. And at this World Cup, she's able to focus entirely on the C1. Let's hope that works in her benefit. Yeah, just a little bit low into eight there, but she's carried her speed. And she's going to keep pushing and keep attacking. Good uh, good delegation walking down with her. Let's see how she goes. So, so far, it's looking good. Slightly up on the split, but Luca Jones is really, really first class. Yeah, slightly down, but she's got a lot of time. She can pull back on the bottom half, so she's still in contention, I think, to make it back into the lead. Great setup for that curl move. In and out of the punt. Oh, I think it might have been just a little bit of touch on the outside pole well, there. Well, the pole was already moving. Look, I wonder if it's... Oh, yes, it was, clearly. Yeah, it is. But it's okay. But nail this one. She can still be on it. Great. Tim 14. Five, five, seconds, five down. seconds down at the moment. It's just... Oh, just no, pulled no, out. clumsy touch. Yeah, just... The boat's just tracked out a little bit further than she wanted. Didn't quite have the edge set up enough to keep it tracking through 16. It's back on the charge. But there's space here because Luca James wasn't perfect in the last section. No, she wasn't, but I think it might be just a little bit too much time to try and bring back here. Again, driving. Good set up there, maybe just a little bit heavy at the edge, but she's driving into 22. Setting Lock, through. Lock's certainly ticking on now. Reference time 1, 16. Eighth athlete to go, and Noemi Fox goes in provisional third place. Yeah, she's going to be disappointed. But here we have Lucy Priya on the top of the course, charging down. One of the younger French athletes coming through on the circuit, but she is... Current French champion. Yeah, so she is. Yeah, she's a great athlete, huge amounts of power. I recall seeing a video recently where she was doing a planche off the back of another athlete and just like some crazy skills. But here she's coming through 5-6, great top section. Pushing like through many seven. Looking forward to going to the Worlds with a, with a very dynamic young French team. Yeah, I think I think them. No, the French have plenty of depth in their athletes, and this year them the young guns are starting to push through them. But they really enjoy each other's. We did a, we did a section for for, for on the TVs, and, and they just love each other's company. Yeah, but one point two nine, so really in the pace there, and certainly clean so far. Looks like that section's really fast. Yeah, and now she can pull it through. Maybe just a little bit loopy there, but oh, just didn't quite have a turn and set up 13. As you can see, she's lost her again. Yeah, oh, that's she's going to be pulling low. No. 
Oh, this is going to be tougher. This is really, this is just bleeding seconds all so the way through. Three of the athletes so far are really struggling. Yeah, it's just it's such a, a tricky little move. 12, 13. Either either it flows through and it's beautiful, or you get really punished. And oh, Edge just dug in a little bit there. She has to fight hard to keep herself from going down. It's reflected in the score, which is 10 seconds off the pace. Keep it going. Yeah, I think what she can do now is I think it's get some get some race experience and learning in for next year. I don't think we're going to be seeing in the final, but she's going to keep pushing and keep driving and seeing what she can do. Into fit. It's a 19, good breakout. She keeps the height going into 20. I think, yeah, this is looking like a nice little stagger at the end. Keeps it moving. Oh, oh no! no. Can she roll it before the gates? The, um, the rules of slalom are if you go through the gate upside down, then you are awarded a 50, but I think she managed to get it just in the nick of time, but unfortunately still picked up a touch. It's an interesting, uh, interesting run there. Yeah, she's going to be disappointed with that. It was all going so well until the 12-13. Um, uh, Nadine Rechnig is a serious contender on her day. She's very fast. Yeah, another one. Austria. One of the athletes that we've seen really dominate on the under-23 circuits. As we can see by the results, she was world champion this year in the um, under-23 champs. And only 20 in the space. Yeah, so she's still plenty left in the tank in terms but of that's career. not what she wanted to do. She's lost a couple of seconds there. Yeah, so the water's changing so much between those two gates, and unless you really put yourself in, um, in a position to take advantage of whatever you get, you're going to get punished if you try and cut it down. But thankfully, she's only 0.63 down on the splits, so she can still pull it back. Maybe just a little bit loopy there from 11 to 12, but she's got the bow set up for 13. So that's worked a treat, just a little bit lower, but ultimately she can still be happy with that. It still puts her in contention for the race. Arguably come out just a little too tight out of 13. But she's pulled it back in and out of 14. She'll be keeping it moving into 15 now. So one second off the pace is a, a safe start, I'd say. Yeah, and again, she's still got plenty of time that she can pull back and look her on this bottom section. Oh, maybe not like that. Just not quite the pre-turn she wanted in there. Just meant she had more turn left to do in the breakout. Hence why she drifted in a little bit low. And the drama into 19. Great breakout there. Look at the speed she carried out. Just learning those edges. It's just a little bit stuck. How she's going to handle this last bit. I, think, I don't think she's going to be pulling it back. Come Luke. I think she's going to be just behind. But we'll wait to see when the finish tells us. So Luca is three point. Luca Jones from New Zealand is three point eight seconds ahead of the field, oh. and she moves into the first place. Again, has high expectations. Next to come up is young Slovakian, eighteen years old. Oh Svakova. no! No, Just, only before it started. Yeah, it's like water wants to can take advantage of anyone. She just got a little too enthusiastic, turned a little bit too early. So you spend half an hour going down with your coach. You have a mental plan. You've been dreaming about this for weeks. And then on the second, <laughs> the second gate, it's, it's all over. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's one of the cruel things of this sport. It can all be over just in a matter of milliseconds unless you're really kind of on point all the way down. And even then, you've got to keep an eye on the water. I think that's why, as a coach, I try and encourage the ability to embrace failure and just take what you're given and get that flexibility so that you're not you're not fragile on the course if you depend too much on your plan you've got to be open to take it as it goes but also the other point you need to note out is, is yes they've been exposed to this level but they are the world's top athletes oh of course and they'll, they'll be practicing all these moves day in day out That's, but at the end of the day water fluctuates it changes and you've got to be you got to be ready and aware of that. So in, in canoe slalom, is it the old 10,000 hours rule? You need to need to put in a lot before you're actually good? Or do, do you have, occasionally, do you have some people just, wow, that have a feel for the water? I think it's 10,000 quality hours. The, um, every now and again, you do get people that just are so in touch with the water, but arguably, I think they've they've played around a lot more and been exposed to a lot more what, the, what their edges can do and maybe just more awareness from a young age, so they become I don't know, a bit more one with the boats. But um, for sure, the more hours you get in, the better. And as you can see, the sport's developing year upon year. What and used like to you be. Say, instantly, you said quality. So it's not just messing around. You have to actually be conscious of what you're doing. Yeah, there's, there's got to be purpose in those sessions. You can't be, can't be just sort of empty uh, loitering in the water. It's got to be with plan and with contention. But that doesn't mean that you can't be playing. 
we've got a bit of splits going on here, so we've got the next athlete on the course. Oh, it's a bit so of an edge loss there. Is, is struggling, and we do have on the course number 11 for athlete is, Moni, is sorry, it's Sonia Franskowska. So two Slovakia athletes in a row, let's not confuse them. That's a learning experience, but at 18 years old. Yeah, she'll take something on.